I may as well record this while I'm coming down this canyon. This is in Tex Creek. It's sure beautiful out here. It's a long drop down there. This is some of the uh, wildlife refuge here in Idaho. It's quite beautiful. See the spot over there? Who? I better pay attention to what I'm doing. It's quite beautiful down here. In the winter time, it's virtually inaccessible, of course. You see this road is awful narrow and awful windy. I hope I don't run across a car coming up this thing. I'll push him off the other side. Anyway, this is Tex Creek. I hope you can see it through my bug-infested windshield. Holy cow. It's tough sometimes to keep a clean vehicle. This is beautiful country to be in. You see I'm quite high up here. That's the Tex Creek area. It goes over to the uh, it goes over to the uh, dam over in Ryrie. I'm going to be going down through that canyon. All right. I lied. I'm not going to drive through the canyon. I'm going to stop here and video on the camera. I'm going to sit on this rock. And... <coughs> I did that on purpose. Gosh. You gotta watch these rocks here in Idaho, man. They move. You gotta sit right. <laughs> uh, the sun's probably at my back, isn't it? I'm trying to show you that beautiful valley. See, check the valley out. That's Tex Creek. Criminy. Now the sun's not gonna be on my face. That's probably a good thing. You don't wanna look at me anyway, do you? All right. I'm continuing on this uh, DNA in the Book of Mormon issue. Hopefully they've got this rock right. On page three, uh, Meldrum and Stephens are talking about DNA, the ideas of DNA, the implications of DNA for us with the Book of Mormon. They say the fact of the situation is not that DNA has exhaustively studied all the groups nor do we have any idea of where all the groups of the peoples of the earth actually have come from yet. I hope the wind's not too bad in this video. The, the human gene pool, they note, as a whole, is a completely mixed by cross currents, eddies, and backwaters. An individual's genes, now this is interesting, an individual's genes reflect a mere fraction of one's genealogical legacy. Examples repeatedly arise where the phenotype, that is the outward physical appearance of a person, the uh, skin color, the facial features, these bear little correspondence to the genotype that is the characteristic DNA markers an individual has. Alternatively, recent examples demonstrate that sample genotypes of individuals often reveal little accord with well-documented... Oh, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. I skipped a line. Woohoo! Now we know how the ancient scribes made mistakes in the scriptures, don't we? Let me start over again. Okay, alternatively, recent examples demonstrate that sample genotypes of populations often reveal little accord with well-documented genealogical records. Now, many population geneticists have repeatedly reiterated cautionary statements that the complexities of evolutionary genetics makes our goal of deciphering population sources and subsequent intermingling of lineages an elusive objective. In other words, to put it in plain words, there are so much uh, admixtures, differences, so many population intermixing that we may never know. We have to be very cautious. This is what I think the critics are not doing. 
And it's time to begin doing that. They say that on page three, incidentally. I've already read this book three times. I'm going through it for the third time, and I'm already tearing apart. I mean, you know, woohoo! Pages out of pages. I've got to tape it all back together for crying out loud. Lousy binding. Terrific book, but lousy binding. Greg Colford, change your binding, will you? Okay, on page five, they say, because it is impossible to analyze all Native American DNA. Oh, wait a minute. Hold it. Page five. Let me start that over again. Because it is impossible to analyze all Native American DNA, Tom Murphy, Simon Southerton, are you paying attention here? These are two scientists. It is impossible. Because of that, it is also impossible to unequivocally state that all Native Americans are of Asian origin. So, Tom Murphy, we don't have a problem. I just want you to understand that. Science is not coming to the conclusions you are. Either are you, Simon Southerton. Another important consideration concerning this hypothesis is that the present Native American population does not necessarily represent the genetic diversity of pre-Columbian Native American populations. Did you get that? He says, if we are able to test all of the Native American populations right now, that still won't reflect the genetic diversity before the Spanish conquest. You gotta understand people, they wiped out 95 percent of all the written records and they wiped out tens of millions of people. That genetic diversity is physically lost. There's no hope of ever recovering it. You could have 10 billion Native Americans on this side of the conquest, and that still won't reflect the diversity that used to be here before the conquest. That's one of the serious limitations of DNA analysis. That's a limitation we have to take into consideration before coming to any fast, hard conclusions against the Book of Mormon. And this is something our critics won't do. There is no problem, Tom Murphy. The problem is your understanding. The problem isn't with DNA science, because it has no fast, hard conclusions. The problem is not with the Book of Mormon. The problem is with Tom Murphy's thinking and his argument. That's the problem. DNA does not refute the Book of Mormon. That argument is simply false.